this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Dog. Welcome back to my channel. We're here for another one of our math making sessions. And oh my goodness, can you believe we're week 121? I know I say it every week, but honestly, I just can't believe how long we've been doing these. It's just absolutely shocking. So today we are making, um, now I called it last time just a different sort of pocket. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's exactly what it is. Um, it's just a kind of foldy, foldy pocket. So it's just a little bit different, I guess, to some of the other pockets that we've, we've done. Um, so I have got a bunch of A4 papers here. Obviously, again, I'm using these because predominantly my stuff is printables now. Um, but obviously previously my stuff was predominantly scrapbook papers. So you can mix and match, you know, neither is better than the other they're both going to work absolutely perfectly for this um i haven't really ever done these on thinner papers um i've always tended to use either you know scrapbook paper or something a little bit thicker um but you know i mean of course there's no reason why you couldn't play around and see how that kind of would work instead um so yeah let's kind of just um crack on and i will kind of uh, show you how to make them and yep and we shall relax and have a nice time. So I have got, obviously, like I say, a bunch of A4 pages here. I've got my scissors, I've got my glue, um, I've got my bone folder, or I will have, yep, got my bone folder. Um, and obviously I've got a whole bunch of things to decorate these up. Now, the only other thing that you might like to have is maybe something like um, some string or some twine or something like that, depending on how you're going to close these. And you'll see what I mean when we actually make the first one. Um, failing that, you could use a paper clip, you could use, um, you know, a bulldog clip, you could just use a, um, you know, like a piece kind of thing, like on there that you'd tuck something under. Um, you can have a variety of different kind of styles. I find string quite good or a paper clip. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I would kind of recommend. Um, yeah, I think that's all that we're going to need. So let's get cracking and making the first one. So I'm just going to move my papers out of the way. Right, so I'm going to use this one for the first one. This is my Beauty Fair kit, and I have to confess, I've never actually made a journal from this. Um, I think I did make something using some of it. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually made kind of a full, complete piece using this kit at all. So yeah going to kind of come along and have a bit of a play with this so it's been coffee dyed um now what i'm going to do i'm going to start by folding this section over so you just want to fold like a tiny fold at one end of your paper now as i say this is a4 paper um which is kind of copy paper size mine is thicker than copy paper I'm going to cut the edge off because my printer failed miserably and didn't cut it quite borderless. So I'm just going to cut along there like that. Okay. And then once I've folded mine, I'm going to trim the height down because I don't want it probably as tall as full height, if that makes sense. Now the next thing that I want to do, and actually bearing in mind that this did not print borderless, I'm just going to cut this edge off as well. So I'll just cut that down there. Okay. So what you want to do is then fold your long piece over. And you want to fold it almost meeting the other side, but not quite. So you're just leaving a little tiny gap there because you're going to be tucking it into that little tiny flap, if you see what I mean. So you just want to go, you know, over as much as you can, but leave kind of maybe, I don't know, a millimetre or so's gap so that that can tuck in there nicely. And then all you're going to do other than, blah, blah, other, other than that, or apart from that, is literally fold your piece around like that. So kind of like completely in half, back on itself. So like this, squish it down, and that's all there is to these. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim mine down so it's a better height because otherwise it's the full height of the page and I did say this last time but you know I mean obviously that's fine you might sometimes want to have them the full height of the page um, but you know maybe not all the time or you know something like that so I'm just going to trim mine down so they're not quite so quite so tall okay and then what I want to do in the front is I just want to take the corners off of 
this because this is going to tuck in to this flap so what I want to do is just kind of make it so that I can get it into that flap a little bit easier so I'm just going to cut it like kind of um, you know tab corners so I'll take that one and then I'll take it over to the other side and use that as my template so they're roughly the same like that okay and that's literally it and then all you're going to do is oops I might need to cut that slightly more actually sorry <laughs> yeah the other thing that I should mention and this is why I should mention it because of course I've already hashed, hashed this one up and this is the first one you're going to need your corners to be out from your flap, if that makes sense. Now, I'm just going to kind of bring this up here to show you. What I mean by out is like that, because this is going to be glued down. So, of course, if your corner is the same width as your paper, it's not going to tuck in properly. So, you just want to make sure that your corner is a little bit... Um, bigger than the flap part if that makes sense so again just then fold these in like that squish them in let me just grab my wipe before I'm completely covered in glue at the very first like three minutes of the video okay squish that down like that okay and then what you've got is basically a completely fold out pocket now Obviously, you could use this as a tuck-in piece. You don't have to glue this onto a page. But if you did glue it onto a page, I would glue this back section down. Oops, sorry, I might have to use my um, hot glue here just because it's not gluing and holding as quickly as I had hoped. So, yeah, just because I'm doing a video, obviously, if I wasn't doing a video, I would be a bit more patient with this. But obviously, I want this to to be working in my in my demonstration. So, yeah, let's just get the hot glue on there so it's completely glued. Right, and then, basically, what I would do is glue it on, like, three sides here or here. You know, either way is absolutely fine. Pop that onto a page. So, if I just grab in this and pretend this is our page, it would be glued down so you'd have, like, a pocket here. You could also, you could just actually do it top and bottom, have it like a belly band, to be honest. That would also work really well. Um, but you'd have it glued in there and then what you do is you pull your flap out and that's why you've got it with these little, you know, slightly bigger triangles if that makes sense. So that will come out there, bearing in mind this part is glued down so obviously mine is moving all over the place. Once it's glued in it's a lot easier to handle because this section is glued down. But you've then got all this journaling space in here which is pretty cool isn't it? And you could also tuck in obviously more bits in here so long as they were kind of narrow to go alongside there. Um, or of course you could tuck it in here and tuck some bits in there. So I mean they're quite a neat pocket aren't they? Now where I'm saying that the string would come in is as you can see it's kind of got this flappy type situation going on oh and it also sorry does open this way as well so again depending on how plain your paper is you could get more journaling space on there you could put a flippy pad on there something like that um so what you're going to want to do is let's just say that i had glued it down on these three sides it would be down there and then you could obviously put for instance a paper clip here like that which would hold that closed. Bearing in mind, it's glued, you know, it would be glued onto your page. Or, of course, you could get some string or some baker's twine or, you know, anything like that. And if I just take the paper clip off, you would glue your string or your baker's twine down at the back in the middle. And then you could just tie it round in the middle there. Whoops. And then, oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today. Oh dear. Um, tie it like that like that okay so either way you know works quite well I don't really have a preference I think the string is nice I think the paper clips are nice um, you know either works really well I'm not going to glue the string on um, but I'm just going to leave it with the string tied round so that when I come to use it I can then decide depending on the project 
whether I'd want string, whether I'd want baker's twine, or whether I'd want a paperclip. So it gives me kind of then the options. But yeah, that's all there is to it. So I'll go through one or two more again because, you know, of course they're not complicated because I don't ever do anything complicated, as you know. But I realised that my tutorial perhaps was a little bit long-winded. So I'll try and make this slightly quicker. So I've got this paper here. And again, what we're going to do is we're just going to fold the edge flap over like this. So this is our tuck point. So, you know, the, the tuck space that our flap is going to tuck into. So that's why we've, you know, why we've tucked this over. So just squish that down again with my bone folder. And then you're going to take your other section, fold it in to, you know, like a millimetre away, like that, okay? So I think I've gone quite skewish on this already, which is not very good really, is it? And then you're just going to fold it round at the back, like that. Right the way across to the edge. So my folding skills are not very good today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on here today. I've already been... In a little bit rushed this morning I've had a few things kind of go wrong this morning so uh, yeah already I'm a little bit flustered but hopefully my day is going to improve so then I'm going to again trim it down you know height wise just so it's not not as tall as my page so like that now bearing in mind I have got these ladies on the other side I just want to check I'm not cutting their heads off or anything like that okay that's my piece then I'm going to cut my triangles here again bearing in mind I need to go and this was the bit that I mucked up last time I need to go so as I've got a decent amount um you know showing kind of thing or not showing showing or not showing I'm not sure now um a decent gap let's just call it a decent gap like that so my triangles have got decent gaps so I've got room basically to glue the flap down okay so actually that one needs I think slightly more like that okay so again just going to glue my flap straight down here like that like that squish them down right just using my wet glue so I'm just going to hold it in place while I have a sip of my tea Oh, that was a good excuse, wasn't it, to be able to have a sip of my tea. Um, and then the whole thing just tucks into here. Now, I'm not going to tuck it into there for the minute because I'm waiting for my glue to dry. But again, so you've then got your open piece like that. Again, it's this, basically, the section that's next to the section with the triangles is what's going to be glued onto your page. So it folds like that. And then you've got opening this way as well. So actually, this one needs to be up kind of the right way because it's got these ladies. So it would be that way on my page. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some string around that. Again, not gluing it in place, but just leaving it in place. Sorry, I've just knotted my string up there. Oh, it's just going to be one of them videos, isn't it? I'm so sorry. <laughs> ah... You just get those days, don't you? And you just think, oh, you know what? Today I should just go back to bed. Because it's going to be one of them days. Hmm. And they just generally, they start out that way, don't they? And then, I mean, often actually they deteriorate. They certainly don't ever seem to get any better, do they? So, yeah. Right. That's my string. And that's how I will leave that, like I say, so that then when I come to use it, I've just got the option, do I want to put the string, put baker's twine, put um, a paper clip. So that's that one. I'll talk you through once more. Again, like I say, not, you know, I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs or anything like that, but, you know, my tutorial maybe is not, you know, showing these to their best, really. So, um, again, I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to just fold it over here like that 
And the other thing to say, actually, is you probably do want double-sided papers for this because, obviously, you're going to see the inside of these. Um, you know, because, of course, that's where your journaling space is going to be. So, you know, of course, it's up to you, but personally, I wouldn't probably use these with something that was plain white inside. I would either coffee dye them or use a double-sided paper in the first place. Again, take that to the literally just like, you know, a millimetre away from the edge like that squish that down okay and then again we're going to just fold this over here to the edge and as well I mean your folding is really going to vary on the thicknesses of your papers like I say I've never really made these from any really flimsy paper I don't think um I mean, perhaps we should try one maybe on some flimsy paper and see how they turn out um you know there's no reason why you can't I mean, I just tend to use kind of thicker papers because I'm always a little bit paranoid that I'm going to tear it. But that's because I'm quite a clumsy person. So tearing is, of course, you know, very likely to happen with me. It might not be so likely to happen for you. Let me just finish my tea because it wasn't all that warm just now. Okay, that's finished. Right. So again, just going to chop my corners in I'm just doing this so that my corners are roughly the same size again you don't have to do this you know it's just kind of you know to help me really um, and then again what I'm going to do is obviously just glue my thingamajigglies you know flap glue my flap down like that again take my wipe to squish that down like that okay hold that down for a moment like that and then again I'm just going to do exactly the same like I say of tie the string round so that when I come to use this I've just got the option then you know whether to um, paper clip or you know glue the string on or you know finish it off kind of as as I fancy um, but if I've got the string tied around there, the good thing is it saves me looking for my string or trying to find something. You know, if I want to use the string, it's right there. It's already tied around it. So, yeah, it's just kind of a time-saving little thing there, really. So, yeah. So, I don't probably need to talk you through any more. I mean, obviously, I guess the only, the only other thing to quickly mention is, of course, make these exactly the size that you would like them. So, my pieces are... Um, you know a4 sheets if you've got scrap bit paper you know 12 by 12 or you know 8 by 8 or whatever i mean you're going to need a rectangle rather than a square um so just cut your piece down to your approximate size rectangle if that makes sense you know you can make these quite small if you want to you don't have to make them as big as i'm making them um i mean i tend to make bigger journals so for me I prefer them bigger but you know make them kind of in the size that you fancy or that you you know that's going to be most useful to you I mean yeah I haven't ever made them really tiny and I'm not sure whether they would work brilliantly well if they were really tiny but definitely I'm sure you could make them out of a5 and they'd be fine so just you know play around and kind of make them like say according to what's going to fit your projects the best so again, fold this straight over so that your folded edges meet, basically, like that. And then I'm just going to cut this down at the top. And I might just cut this one down at the bottom as well. So again, just, you know, just demonstrating that that's my my foldy out piece is going to be glued on this piece remember the you know the third piece along so one two three the third piece along the piece you know to the side of the piece with the triangles so again just going to cut my triangles here like that oops and like that Okay, and then I'm just going to again glue my glue my flap down across there. 
Okay. Like that. And like that. So this is my time traveller papers, by the way. So I've used so far, the first one was the Beauty Fair. The next one was, oh, Bella. Bella. I can't remember now the name of that. Oh, I can't remember, I'm afraid. Bella, something. Um, uh, the next one was the um, birds, bees and butterflies. The brown birds, bees and butterflies. And then this one is the time traveller. Um, papers so just in case you were wondering what papers that I was using because I know that sometimes you know I do get people then say oh could you please say the papers that you're using as you use them so yes I do apologize for that so this is the time traveler um, papers so and everything that's available in my shop by the way I must quickly mention I'm running a sale in my shop yes for um, you know the Black Friday kind of week um, sale so it's running till the 1st of December and it's 15% off of the entire shop, you know, and there's no minimum purchase for that. So, you know, if you purchase something for even, you know, $1, you're going to get 15% off. So, yeah, that's running till the 1st of December. So, and it, it should be running right now. You know, I've set that um, coupon up, I think even this morning, I think I did it. Honestly, I know that sounds really strange to say, I think, but <laughs> it's been one of those kind of days. So this is my flying tapestry um, papers. I have to say, I love these papers and I haven't had a chance to play with them yet, but I can't wait to play with them. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing with these. Going to make something from these in the new year is, is the plan. So again, just going to fold this little piece here, squish it down. So I've printed all of these on kind of thicker paper slash card. Um, it tends to be a mixture between 200, well, I, I, let's call it 180 and 250 GSM. And that basically is just dependent on what I can get at the time. I tend to buy my paper from Amazon and it really is just dependent on what I can get hold of. Sometimes they have all sorts and sometimes obviously, you know, there's a sort of more limited choice. It's just, you know, the luck of the draw really on the day that you're ordering, um, you know, but any of those kinds of thicknesses are fine. I mean, if anything, this one I would say is possibly a little bit too thick. It's, you know, it's turning out quite a, quite a chunky piece. I mean, when I say chunky, it's not really too chunky, but, you know, it's quite sort of um, noticeably thicker, obviously, when I'm squishing it down and things. So again, just going to trim this off across the top like that and then going to oops, fold my little triangle uh, not fold sorry cut cut my little triangles like that okay <clears throat> and like that Okie dokie, and then again, glue my flap down. So, I mean, you're using really minimal glue here as well, which, you know, is quite good, isn't it? It's, you know, the very minimal supplies for this pocket. I mean, you're just literally using one sheet of paper. It's all in the folds, basically. And, you know, the tiniest amount of glue, and then, you know, maybe some string if you want it, or maybe a paper clip. And that's your whole pocket, which, you know, is fantastic I mean this is quite a good one that you can do just while watching TV and things like that you know sometimes I think pockets are a little bit complicated or maybe have lots of elements and this you know they're not quite so um, quick to come together these obviously they're they're really quick to come together and you know very minimal supplies so I've just dropped my, my ball of string on the floor so it's now uh, now all unraveled under the desk which is pretty annoying okay so again just cut that down okay so I will stop going on about the process now because of course we've made several so I'm sure that you know that's all, all good now um this one here is my brown bunnies I think I think this is my brown bunnies uh yeah just deciding which way to have this it's a really nice paper, so I'm trying to work out how to get the best out of it, you know, and have the most of it showing. 
Um, so yeah, let's kind of just relax now, have a nice time, craft along together and have a bit of a catch up. So I hope that everybody's having a good start to their week. Obviously, again, I always say this every week, but yeah, I film on a Monday and um, this obviously goes up on the Tuesday. So for me, my week's literally only just started. Um, yeah, it's such a lovely, beautiful looking day today. It's really sunny and gorgeous. I have to say, really windy and really freezing, <laughs> really freezing. I mean, I went to the gym this morning and the car said... Actually, I'm trying to think. Did the car say five and a half? I think the car said five and a half. Oh, I have to say it felt a lot colder than five and a half. A lot colder. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what temperature it felt like, but it really, really, really feels cold today. I guess it's because it's very windy um, and that wind chill, you know, it really makes a difference, doesn't it? Because despite the sun, despite the fact it looks so gorgeous, it's freezing out there today. So, yeah, not kind of, um, not a day for, you know, it's just a jacket or anything like that. It's definitely a day for a big winter coat. Uh, in fact, I've only got one jumper on. I'm going to have to go and put another jumper on underneath my jumper in a minute. Like a polo neck or something underneath it because I'm really cold. Um, you know, normally it gets really warm up in the loft here where I film, but today it's very, very cold. So, yeah, but I mean, don't get me wrong, it's gorgeous. A beautiful, crisp, crisp cold day. Yeah, beautiful, but freezing. Absolutely freezing. So I hope that the weather's absolutely gorgeous wherever you guys are. hope it's not all drab and grey. Right, there we go. And I just want to say thank you so much to all those lovely people who've purchased my um, Christmas, Dickensian Christmas kit. Um, I did the launch on Sunday. Uh, obviously, there's going to be lots more videos to come using that kit yet because I, I've gone on to make a project. I have finished the project now, but I had such a lovely time making it. So I really hope that you guys would join me for the process of making the bits that I made with it. Um, everything turned out really, really lovely in the end. Um, yeah, so I, have I filmed the flip through of that? I think I have filmed the flip through. Um, yeah, I think I've filmed the flip through. This is my uh, Paris bouquet. So this is that paper and I have just literally coffee dyed the back of it. So is that again, when you open the paper, I just want it to have something pretty, you know, rather than just stark white inside, which of course, you know, that's not very interesting to look at. Oh, and I hope that everybody um, enjoyed my contribution to the amazing collaboration that Rachel over at Rachel and Bella Crafts put together. She did the A to Z of Christmas, which I think I said in the video, but Oh my goodness, I mean that must have been such a huge mammoth task putting that collaboration together because I'm sure she said, I'm sure it was 34 of us were joining in, which is no small feat when you're trying to kind of like arrange, you know, separately with 34 people. I mean, emails going back and forth between 34 people in itself, I mean that's massive isn't it? And you know, hugely time consuming and you know, a massive, massive undertaking. Um, but, you know, on top of that, she also obviously put together the, you know, who was doing what letter and all of that kind of stuff. And I know that, you know, probably some people uh, requested a letter, you know, not because they're being fussy, but maybe I know that I watched Tracy Fox do her video and it suited her to do it. I think she said one of the first because she was very busy with the Foxy rag, um, you know. I didn't make a request for where I was, but thankfully I was much further down the line because I just would have struggled to get my video out on time. Um, so yeah, it just was very lucky for me that I was at Y, so it gave me a lot of breathing space to do my video. Um, so it just, you know, it worked out fantastically well, you know, from my point of view. Uh, aside from the fact that I was then doing Y, which who wants to be doing Y, that's like an awful letter to choose something for isn't it but 
um, you know, had a lovely time doing it. So, um, yeah, thank you so much to Rachel from Rachel and Bella Crafts for actually, you know, inviting me to join in that collaboration. It was really, really cool. So thank you very much. Um, and, you know, whether it was by design or whether it was by fluke, thank you so much for putting me at the end of the alphabet because it just gave me that breathing space that I kind of needed. So, um, yeah, it couldn't have worked out better for me. But there have been oh tons of amazing videos, I have to say, in that collaboration. So check them out if you haven't. Um, obviously, as I say, mine went up on the 22nd, which was today for me filming which for you guys obviously was yesterday um so yeah do go and check out you know my video from yesterday if you didn't see it and obviously that has all the links to the channels that are also joining in the you know the collaboration so yeah um but yeah i know that there's lots of amazingly talented ladies all joined in so yeah it's been really really fun Okay, I mean these are really quick to do aren't they? I'm really kind of doing a lot of them, which is amazing. There we go. Oh, and another amazing video. Sorry, that seems to be my, my word of the day today, amazing. That's my word of the day. So another amazing video was the fantastic, um, you know, crafty questions. Uh, collaboration with the lovely Joey DeFee and Barbara over at 49 Dragonflies and Gail Agostinelli. How cool is that? And they did a wonderful video. It was so fun to watch. They all looked gorgeous um, and it was so interesting. They just were really engaging and really, yeah, really great video. I'm sure that most of you guys have probably watched it. If you haven't, I mean, do hop over and, you know, check it out because it's wonderful that we all support one another and um yeah they did such a brilliant job and again you know these things they all are very time consuming and very um you know very hard to organize so i mean that in itself you know because you're geographically you're in different locations around the globe so you've got the time difference factor you've got you know getting together kind of obviously email in the in the first place you know that as well takes a lot of time you know, and then, I mean, I, I it went out on Barbara's channel, so I mean, I'm assuming that she did the edit for the video and things, but I mean, that all three of them were up on the screen at the same time, so Lord only knows how that works technically, but um, yeah, it was amazing. So, I mean, do go over and check that out. I had such a lovely time watching their video. It was really interesting, like I say, just to hear, you know, their lovely... Um, or, you know, just their very informative answers. It was quite nice to know what you guys want to know, um, you know, questions wise. Um, and like I say, they all looked so gorgeous. And yeah, it was just a really lovely video, really fun. And they just all really enjoyed the process. You could just tell they were really having a great time. Um, you know, lots of laughing and just full on chatting. So it was a really lovely video. So yeah, do go over and check that out if you haven't. There we go. Right, yeah, like I said, I'm actually flabbergasted at how many of these I'm managing to do. Um, it's really, you know, they're really coming along very quickly. So I'm going to do this one, which these are my English country garden papers. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm just working out now which piece I want to have glued down um, and which piece I want to be kind of showing. Do I want that piece showing or do I want that piece? I think I want this piece. This piece showing. So yeah, I want to have this piece as my little flap. Again, just fold this over. So again, this seems like this has been printed. I mean, I printed this a long time ago. Um, but this has been printed onto a pretty thick card. And this could even be, um, I don't know, it could even be 300 GSM. I mean, I think I have bought 300 GSM once um, in the kind of photo quality paper. I have to say, my printer didn't overly like it. So I don't think I've ever bought it since. Um, yeah. 
but again it's it's worth kind of just experimenting and you know all people's printers are different aren't they so just because my printer didn't like it doesn't mean that yours won't but that was just my my experience okay and squish that down like that and again just going to cut that down here at the bottom <clears throat> looks horribly wonky cutting yet again oh my goodness what is going on with me what is going on honestly today I've just got like the worst cutting skills <laughs> it doesn't help actually when the card is very thick you know it can sometimes be very tricky to then cut it to be honest um so yeah if that happens you might want to just kind of then tidy it up slightly when you open it out and that's you know easy enough to do she says as, as she struggles says as she struggles so um yeah i'm trying to think now what else what else have been up to other than watching lovely YouTube videos? Um, what else have I been up to? Hmm. Not a lot, really. Um, yesterday went for a lovely walk with my son. So, yep, we had a lovely time. Um, it was, again, a cold, crisp day. Again, absolutely freezing. <laughs> absolutely freezing. But we came back and we've got an open fire. Um in our you know living room and um we very rarely have an open fire because and i think i might have talked about this before we are absolutely hopeless at getting a successful fire you know one that burns for a long time <laughs> one that lets out any heat oh just rubbish they kind of generally just burn out within like you know they start off absolutely roaring fire and then within like you know 30 minutes the fire's just burned out completely and gone to like nothing well, my son actually did a roaring fire yesterday, one that it burnt for ages and oh, it really warmed the rim up. It was lovely. So yeah, we did that. And um, cause we've got so cold on our walk and you know, we watched um, Friends back to back because we both said, you know, we really, really love watching Friends, but we both said, um, you know, you feel like you've watched them all, don't you? Kind of with Friends and you think, oh, you know, I've watched them all. And then actually, it's quite surprising, you know, when you go way, way, way back. Because we didn't, you know, I didn't start watching it when it first came on. It took me a long time. I was a bit of a latecomer um, to the party. I mean, no surprise there, because I'm always a bit late with everything. But uh, yeah, I was a bit of a latecomer. So we both were saying, you know, I don't think we've really ever watched, like, right from the beginning. Um, so he said, I'm going to go right back, you know, to the beginning and watch from the start so that I can honestly say I've watched every single episode. So I said, oh, well, that sounds cool. You know, let's, let's do that then. So we did. And, um, well, I'm not saying we did as in, you know, of course we haven't got through the whole, the whole series or the whole bunch of episodes yet, but do you know how many we watched? <laughs> Eleven. 11 I mean that is just embarrassing isn't it I mean bearing in mind that we also stopped that you know kind of to do a couple of things like I don't know um the dinner and things like that so I mean that's pretty you know pretty hard going isn't it so we've watched 11 yeah um so we watched them back to back while the fire was roaring in the background and we just had such a nice time and yeah it got lovely and toasty in the um in the room and things so that was what we did yesterday afternoon. It was just lovely. Absolutely lovely. Um, yeah. Then Saturday, trying to think what we did on Saturday. Uh, I don't know, I can't even remember really what we did on Saturday. Um, I don't think the weather was so good on Saturday, if I recall. Yeah, it wasn't so good on Saturday. Um, what did we do last week? we do anything interesting last week oh um on the wednesday went to see that clint eastwood film cry macho oh gosh it was really boring <laughs> that's just my opinion obviously there may be other people out there who would absolutely love it but yeah i mean i really like those clint eastwood films um you know his kind of later ones that he's done in the last few years 
you know, that he's kind of directed and produced and all the rest of it. Um, you know, uh, there was Gran Torino and what was that other one that he did? Uh, the Mule and things. You know, they're really engaging, really watch, you know, watchable films. And he has this amazing quality to kind of like, I don't know, like take a very, very, very small story, if you know what I mean, and make, a, you know, a really watchable film out of it, which is, you know, incredible, isn't it? So... Obviously, when I saw the um, trailer for the Cry Macho, I thought, oh, brilliant, you know, Clint Eastwood one, let's go and watch it. Oh, my goodness. Uh, personally, I found it so boring. I have to say, so did my son. And, um, in fact, I actually said to him at one point, should we go? You know, should we go? It's really boring. We didn't go. We stayed to the end. But, oh, my goodness, it was so boring. <laughs> I thought, he thought it was pretty rubbish too. So, yeah, I mean, maybe there's some people out there who would really like it. We have to say, you know, I have to say we really thought it was rubbish. But, you know, that was um, that was just us, maybe. Right, so let's count up how many we've done. We've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. I mean, that's pretty um, good going, isn't it? So let's decorate one up. I'm going to decorate this one because... Um, I still haven't finished my birds, bees and butterflies folio that I was working on way, way back doing like, like an autumn um, folio. Yep, I still haven't finished it. So it's still, it's still kind of there, just, just still not finished. So yeah, let, oops, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to decorate this one up. So I'm just pulling in again, just some things that I've got laying around here. And just see if they kind of look nice on here. So, um, yeah, I mean, that looks quite pretty on there, to be honest, doesn't it? Maybe up the top. I mean, hopefully that wouldn't get in the way too much when it's tucking in. It, You know, it may well, but hopefully not too badly. Um, let me see what else I've got laying around here. Honestly, my desk's such a mess because, and I know I've said this recently, but I'm filming um, a little series for the run up to Christmas, the, you know, the 12 days of Christmas, Christmas countdown. And yeah, I've nearly finished it now, but it's taken a lot of filming and um, it's obviously taken a lot of mess. So yeah, no, you know, no excuses. I mean, my desk's always pretty messy. So, you know, it's not like it's kind of ooh, unusually messy. No, it's always messy, but yeah, it's even messier now. Um, let me just see whether I had like a label or anything on here. So these are some of those fussy cut bits that I took on my holiday, you know, on the cruise. Um, these are the bits that I just didn't get round to cutting. So just see if I've got some bits here that, you know, colour wise would tie in nicely with this. So I've got this orange butterfly. Don't be that it's a bit on the big side, but we'll give it a try. Oh, it might be too big to be honest, yeah. Got some other butterflies here, so let's just take one of those. Uh, uh, and I've got some labels here, so let's just have a look at the labels. Hmm. Okay. just cut this out oh do you know I really 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 should put my glasses on let's do that okay okie dokie there we go yeah I mean obviously now kind of getting ready in the throes of getting ready for Christmas so I know that you guys I'm pretty sure have got Thanksgiving coming up this week so I can't remember but I'm thinking maybe it's Friday <laughs> I hope I've got that right um I I looked it up but it was a few weeks ago now that I looked it up and I can't quite remember um but I really hope that you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving um you know obviously we don't really kind of do Thanksgiving over here um in the UK we do you know only Christmas um but yeah I hope that you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving so I'm sure that you're all busy getting ready for it and, uh, you know, kind of maybe getting together with family members and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I hope that you all have a really, really lovely day. 
Okay. Okay. Just see. Obviously, I do need to ink the the butterfly because I haven't made a brilliant job. Oh, that's lovely, like that actually. That looks really good just like that. It doesn't really need anything else going on there, does it? So yeah, let's just ink up the butterfly just where I made a shoddy job, shoddy job of cutting it like that. So I'm just going to glue these, um, you know, flower trims up here on the top. Oops, check I'm gluing them the right way around. Okay. Pop them down there. Like that. Okay, and my label. Yeah, I'm so cold still. You know, like, I don't know about you guys, once I get cold, that's it. I just, I can't seem to then warm back up. So I'll probably just stay cold now for the, like the whole day. Oh, yeah. It's really rubbish. I'm, I've always been like that. I just, I can't seem to regulate my body temperature. You know, it kind of gets cold and that's it. It will stay cold for hours and hours. There we go. Yeah, love that label on there. That looks so pretty, doesn't it? And then I'm going to have this butterfly over there on the flap. Just adds extra interest, really, doesn't it? Uh, oh, I just suddenly thought, oh no, that's fine. I just thought, oh, is that going to open? It doesn't open, so that's fine. Um, and then I'm just going to have this flower there, like that to the side. Oh, I love how that looks. Doesn't that look gorgeous? Um, and I'm just wondering if we could have some bling in my butterfly. Well, not in my butterfly, but, you know, in on the body, on the body of the butterfly. So you just have a look. Do you know, I can't even locate my bling. My desk is so messy. I mean, can you believe it? Things really must be bad, mustn't they, for me to not even be able to get to my bling because... Um, you know, fancy burying the bling out of everything. Right, the thing I use the most is now buried. That's just like a disaster, isn't it? Okay, right, just gonna take a little bit of bling. Just put that in the butterfly. Okay. Let's just do that. Like that, okay. Whoops. Oh, come on. Oh, and I must go out in a bit and buy some more glue because um, I've actually run out of glue now. So, okay. You know, I'm on the last, the last bit of glue. There we go. Right. So that's that. Now, I still haven't decided, obviously, the string or the um, paper clips. So, I mean, I know that I mentioned that I'm still doing my um, my folio that I started all that time ago using these brown birds and butterflies. So, again, I'm not going to stick the string on yet because I can't remember really, you know, what I'd done on that folio. I, I mean, I can't really remember the folio at all. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it so that when I then come to use it, I've again still got the option of do I want the string, do I want to put, um, you know, a paper clip on it. If I put the string down, obviously I've lost my options. So yeah, I want to leave my options kind of open as much as I can. So just going to open this out now. So again, obviously I've got this inside here, which again can just ink around yeah I'm still using that walnut stain I've been using that for ages now I just really enjoy using it to be honest it's um it's been really good really inky okay and again just going to go across my my fold lines I mean, probably should actually fold them in so as I can get to them a bit easier that. Okay. 
like that. Okay, and then hold my piece back in. What I might do on this one is actually, oops, in fact, I'm not going to fold that in for now, is actually put a couple of um, panels on here. So I just want to put a couple of little pieces there for journaling. So let me just have a look and see what I've got, whether I've got anything laying about that I can use. Um, hold on. Okay, I'm just looking for anything really, anything neutral that I can just use to place down. Oops, and this is probably a bit solid. Um, yeah, a little bit thick. So hold on a second. Oh, come on. I have got this, which I could use. This is like just the back side of some sheet music. Ooh, gosh, that would be tiny, wouldn't it? Mm. Let's try this. So if I fold it like that. Okay. I hope this is going to work out and I'm not going to just make a big hash of this now. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest, because it's a bit how it's been, isn't it? Okay, and right, just need to kind of keep this folded. So obviously that's way too long at the moment. Um, let's just see, so I'm going to take it in half. So before I cut it in half, I'm just going to take it down so that I can glue it down as little journaling spots. So again, just go across there. Okay. Like that. Okie dokie. And then this one. Like that. So, yeah, I mean, they're quite nice, aren't they? So what I might just quickly do is round the corners at the bottom. So it looks a little bit more like it's meant to be actually on there rather than just plonked on there. I've got a new um, corner rounder and I have talked about this in another video recently. So I apologise if I'm now repeating myself or whether it's yet to come. I think it's yet to come. Um, <laughs> it's not very exciting, I know, but... Hey, it was exciting for me. It's a new corner rounder in that it's bigger corners. So my corner rounder was those smaller corners. And um, yeah, I've gone for a bigger corner one, which actually I have to say I'm really, really loving. So, I mean, I've had that small corner rounder for years and years. And it's, you know, it's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, it's probably a bit blunt, but I could just, you know, do that with some... Um, I think it's tin foil. Is it tin foil or is it greaseproof paper? One or the other. Um, but yeah, I thought actually I'd quite like the bigger, the bigger corners. So yeah, I just got that recently, and it's really nice, really really nice. Okay, so that's my other journaling spot. Okay, take. Just spread that down with my bone folder. Okay, so that's my little journaling spots. And again, I could just kind of add like a label or something at the bottom of those. And again, actually, these are my labels. They're also in my shop. So, yeah, just for anyone who didn't see the launch video of those, they're also, um, you know, listed in my Etsy shop. So I think it's a nine-page nine download that you get with those to get a lot of different labels. Well, they're mainly different colourways. Um, same labels, different colourways. So, yeah, but you get, you know, a lot of options then to make different things obviously so uh, yeah right there we go 
So that is that pocket. That then tucks in like that. You've got your journaling space here. You've got this piece here, obviously glued down on here. If I'm going to glue it in, like I say, I can't remember really that folio that I've been making. And then of course you open this out like that and you've got all of this journaling space in there. So, you know, they're really a nice, nice versatile pocket. And, um, you know, hopefully, oops. Obviously this is a bit cumbersome to undo and do up whilst it's not stuck in. Um, once it's stuck in, it generally becomes a lot easier because of course it's then not moving around or anything. So, but just to kind of demonstrate, you could then also tuck something into here as well um, as a pocket. And then obviously, you know, this one's obviously too wide for the piece. So if that were the case, I would use a paper clip rather than the string closure. Um, but you know, so you've got lots of room and lots of different options on them. So yeah, I think they're a really nice one. I have to confess, another one that I had kind of forgotten about. So again, I'm really finding these reruns just so handy to, um, you know, to go through because, you know, it's surprising how many things that we actually kind of have made in the past. And then we just forget all about, don't we? So um, yeah. I hope that you found them handy and um, you know useful and yeah don't forget to check out my shop with my 15% off across the shop um, sale that I'm running at the moment till the 1st of December and yeah thank you so much for watching I hope you all have an amazing week and hopefully see you guys tomorrow so thank you so much then bye